Aloha Mai Kako, a Koma Mai to Curtain Call, a program of reviews, previews, interviews, and features of and or with the great art and artists on Maui and beyond. I'm playwright James Nevius. You may also know me as singer-songwriter Kimo Nevius, filling in for Paul James Brown. As one of the co-producers of A Streetcar Named Desire, Paul felt he had an unresolvable conflict of interest and could not review the show. He asked me to do it, and I agreed. And what a show it is. Playing through April 16th at Pro Arts Playhouse in Kihei, Tennessee Williams' Streetcar Named Desire is one of the towering classics of 20th century American drama. This strong production, under the helm of director Sally Sefton, does a wonderful job of not simply telling the story, but also succeeds at embracing all the characters' inherent contradictions. Like Eugene O'Neill and Arthur Miller, Tennessee Williams came to define a style of playwriting that is simultaneously both realistic and hyper-realistic, with dialogue that is sometimes ordinary, but just as often more akin to poetry. Doing justice to this classic can be daunting, but I'm pleased to say that this talented crew of Maui actors brings Streetcar to life in new and unexpected ways. A Streetcar Named Desire tells the story of sisters Blanche and Stella Dubois. Blanche has arrived in New Orleans to stay with Stella and her husband, Stanley Kowalski, in their one-room apartment. Two rooms, if you count the curtain. As Blanche says in her opening lines, they told me to take a streetcar named Desire and transfer to one called Cemeteries and ride six blocks and get off at Elysian Fields. In that terse bit of dialogue alone, the play's overarching themes are immediately presented. Desire, death, and our uniquely American quest for finding a paradise, our own Elysian Fields, here on Earth. Over the course of the play's three-hour running time, the characters are forced to come to terms with desire and loss in difficult and sometimes shocking ways. Perhaps the biggest challenge in mounting any production of Streetcar can be summarized in two words, Marlon Brando. It is not unusual, of course, for a hit Broadway show to be turned into a movie. From the jazz singer to the odd couple to In the Heights, adapting theater to the big screen is as old as the medium itself. But rarely is a play so thoroughly associated with its filmed version, as is the case with Streetcar. The late Roger Ebert once wrote that you could, quote, make a good case that no performance has had more influence on modern film acting styles than Brando's work as Stanley Kowalski. Talk about big shoes to fill. Brando's famous cry of Stella has become a pop culture touchstone, and removed from the context of the play, it has also become a shorthand way to parody Brando and the method acting he and many of his contemporaries embrace. To his credit, Jefferson L. Davis, who plays Stanley at Pro Arts, doesn't try to be Brando, which could easily descend into caricature. Instead, Davis, memorably seen at Pro Arts in 2019 as Guy Haynes in Strangers on a Train, makes this role his own. In the New Yorker review of the original 1947 Broadway staging, in which Brando starred opposite the great Jessica Tandy, critic Walcott Gibbs called Brando, quote, pure ape, an actor whose brutally effective characterization emphasized the horrors and life in New Orleans. Smartly, Davis doesn't make his Stanley pure ape or pure id. Instead, this Stanley is a man constantly on edge, someone whose carefully constructed world seems like it's always on the verge of falling apart. In some productions, Stanley goes from congenial to explosive in a heartbeat. I like that in Jefferson Davis's performance, you consistently see the gnawing inside Stanley. We all know people like this, the sort of man who thinks that if everything in life lined up just so, then maybe things would be okay. But, of course, they are never okay. An idea haunts all the characters in this production, a sense that everyone is trying to recapture their past glory, be it real, or imagined. And nowhere is that notion more apparent than in Hoko Pavao's searing performance as Blanche, Streetcar's central character. Pavao is returning to the stage after a four-year hiatus. She was last seen in Elephant Man, House of Yes, Miss Saigon, and Man of La Mancha. Not only does Pavao expertly embody the faded Southern Belle, she was doing so as a last-minute addition to the cast. When I saw the play on opening night, Pavao was playing Blanche with only three weeks of rehearsal under her belt. 
to step into this iconic role at such short notice and then make the audience think the role was tailored to her is quite a feat. Like Stanley, Pavow's Blanche always has something simmering just below the surface. She arrives in New Orleans, having taken a leave of absence from her job as a school teacher in Laurel, Mississippi, ostensibly to inform her sister, Stella, that the two sisters have lost their family plantation home, Belle Reve. But since Blanche arrives with what seems to be all of her earthly possessions packed into a steamer trunk, this doesn't appear to be a quick social call. How long is she planning to stay? That's the immediate point of friction between Blanche, Stanley, and Stella, who at Pro Arts is played by Liana Locke, most recently seen on Maui stages as Cinderella in Into the Woods and Mabel in Pirates of Penzance. Locke's Stella is the connective tissue between Blanche and Stanley, pulled between the love of her husband and fealty to her sister. But Stella isn't a mere foil, simply on stage to allow the drama to unfold. In a line that was cut from the film version of Streetcar, Stella tells Blanche early on that Stanley's always smash things, and that on their wedding night, quote, he snatched off one of my slippers and rushed about the place, smashing the light bulbs with it. Locke is brilliant here as she admits to her sister, I was sort of thrilled by it. Unlike Tennessee Williams' first big hit, The Glass Menagerie, which kept the drama tightly focused on its four principal characters, in Streetcar, the playwright is more expansive in his dramatist personae. This allows a number of Maui actors to shine in smaller roles. Before he settled on the title, A Streetcar Named Desire, Williams was actually going to call the play The Poker Night. And Stanley's poker slash bowling buddies, Lou Young's Steve, Shane Bourget's Pablo, and J. Scott McClellan's Mitch, are all integral to the story. McClellan, last seen at Pro Arts in The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime, stands out as Mitch, Blanche's suitor. And it was a pleasure to see Rene Dayal, known to many on Maui as blues singing sensation Sweet Mama D, as Eunice, Steve's wife, and the Kowalski's landlord. In a nice touch, Sefton has Dayal provide musical accompaniment to the scene changes, though I wish the sound here had been mixed a bit better to showcase Mama D's soulful voice. It's especially effective that Dayal opens the show singing Summertime, the song that was written to open the Gershwin opera Porgy and Bess, another great American tragedy. Todd Van Amberg's sets perfectly evoke the Kowalski's working class neighborhood, while Ricky Jones's lighting design does what good lighting should do, highlight the action without being obtrusive. The costumes by Kathleen Schultz and Cat Gregory are particularly effective in the final climactic scenes. Did I mention the play is three hours long? This isn't a knock on this production. Three hours is the standard runtime for this play. But the second half does sometimes become as languid as an August afternoon in the French Quarter, as William slowly builds towards the powerful finale. Stick with it. The payoff will keep you thinking about this story for some time to come. A Streetcar Named Desire by Tennessee Williams continues Friday and Saturday at 7.30 p.m. and Sunday at 2 and Thursday the 14th to Saturday the 16th at 7.30 p.m., and there will be a special matinee on the 16th at 2 p.m. Tickets are available at 463-6550 or www.proartsmaui.com. Don't miss it. Well, that's Curtain Call for this week. Thanks for tuning in. My thanks to Paul Janes Brown for asking me to pinch it. Next week, Paul will be back, but it's been a pleasure filling in for him. I'm James Kimonevius. Ahui ho. Thank you.